Welcome into the ESPN FC studios for this Wednesday edition of the show. What a crew we have assembled. Brian McBride, Chaka Hislop, and a well-rested back from vacation, Craig Burley. How was it? I was working. <laughs> you were working? Not the whole time. So you dancing with a B at one point. You call that working? <laughs> two, listen, I was there for two, 12 of the days I was there. Two of those days were work. So you were working. It wasn't all right. vacation. Uh, speaking of those who are working abroad, we've got our uh, crew in Madrid. Right now, uh, Stuart Robson is uh, is with a standing guard outside. Well, he was at Wembley as well. Yes, he was. Uh, he, also, he also looks well-rested. Are out there in Madrid as well. We'll get uh, get their thoughts in a moment. But uh, time to talk about the Europa League final. Why? Wow, what a performance from Chelsea. A 4-1 to one the final score. Eden Hazard with a brace. Craig, I'll start with you. Was this uh, Chelsea being great or just a, a total embarrassment for Arsenal? No, it was a good performance from Chelsea, particularly after, I say, maybe the half-hour marker, after half-time. Uh, but he got, to, he got to context it with, with, uh, with Arsenal, who were really poor in the second half. And who are really a poor side, if we're being honest? You look at their away form this year, this year uh, it's weak. It's why they didn't get in the top four in Champions League football when they were in a good position to do so. Uh, but Chelsea had the players that took advantage. They got better players. Their bigger players turn up on bigger occasions, i.e. you measure Ozil against Hazard that kind of thing. Uh, and then defensively, I don't think either team uh, have been great this year defensively, but I think out of two poor defences, Chelsea certainly was better mm. than Arsenal's. It was awful in that second half. Shaka, what did you see today? Well, I, I thought Chelsea were quite clearly had the better players, um, but at the same time, Chelsea were a team with, with not a whole lot to play for in terms of reward, other than, other than the, the, the silverware, Euro, Europa League silverware. Arsenal's season was resting on this 90 minutes. After everything they'd done in the build-up against Valencia and against Napoli, they had fourth place finish in their own hands and somehow managed to take seven points from their last seven league games and find themselves outside the top four looking in and had it all to prove. And if any team were to be motivated for this game, you'd fear it was Arsenal. Mm. Yet still, the first 45, well, I, I thought they played very well in the first 45 minutes, but, but couldn't get a goal. And then after that, once Olivier Giroud grabs the goal, it was what we've seen of Arsenal of the closing weeks of the season. A team that lacked any real fight, lacked any real spine. And in the end, it was an embarrassment at the hands of, of Chelsea, who came into this with all sorts of problems off the field. And yet still, they walk away quite simply, um, with a whole lot more to celebrate and, and, and leaving you scratching your heads with this Arsenal team. Lacazette, Aubameyang, Ozil, all in the starting mm. lineup, And yet outside of that kind of one moment of brilliance from Alex Wobie, Arsenal toothless in the second half. What, what happened? Yeah, second half, you could see they were all over the place. I think, you know, Chelsea was able to find an out ball. They were able to relieve pressure. And, and Arsenal weren't able to actually defend against that. To me, this was more about when you talk about their front three. Ozil... Pretty much anonymous throughout, I thought. But in the beginning, in the first 20 minutes, Arsenal w did a good job of moving Chelsea around and actually catching Azpilicueta uh, in too far. So that left side opened up for him. There was plenty of opportunities. One was a through ball. One possibly uh, was a penalty. They just didn't take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And if you switch it, you give Chelsea a little time to, to fix that at halftime. They come out. They play a much better uh, attacking game but defended extremely well. Christensen had an excellent game coming in and, and replacing Rudiger, not having played quite a bit. They didn't seem out of sorts like Arsenal did. Mm. Arsenal? Look, Worth a hammer. Look, 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 I know we'll get to Chelsea, but, but you know, in some ways, and I know Rob was waiting patiently, in some ways this is a, this is a paper and over the cracks, smokescreen appearance at a, a big European, OK, it's not the Champions League, but a big European final... And we know Chelsea have their own issues with transfer bans and managers and players possibly leaving. But let's just look at Arsenal here, who at the moment, and have been for a while, are on the road to nowhere, right? As an ownership, as a structure, as signing policy, as current players, as a squad, it's a club that has got to a European final, and I'll credit them for that. It doesn't say much for some of the teams that they beat, like Valencia and Napoli, by the way. But they got to the cup final, and how the hell they got there, hmm. I don't know. Because it's a club that, if it finishes fourth or fifth in the Premier League over the next few years, then that's going to be good enough, I think, uh, because it hasn't got the players. The manager can't go uh, without any criticism, but it really goes a lot deeper than that. Uh, and it's been rotten away since the overstay of Arsene Wenger, since the ownership of Stan Kroenke, and since the signing policies of people with, you know, short-term views. And 
really and truly, uh, if I was an Arsenal fan, uh, I would be extremely worried about my competitiveness domestically in particular in the next five years in their current format. Let's bring in uh, Stuart Robson. Robbo, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe on yesterday's show you said that this would very much come down to Unai Emery's approach. Did he get it wrong or did his players let him down tonight? I thought he started the game quite well. Uh, I thought he got his tactics right. His system was better than Chelsea's system. And Brian mentioned it. Uh, the two centre forwards for Arsenal occupied the four, center, uh, four defenders for Chelsea. Aspilicueta was too narrow. Emerson was too narrow at times. And it allowed Kalazinac the freedom of the park in that first half. He didn't make the most of it. And then Chelsea, having scored the first goal, then had better quality players. They had better movement in the front areas. Giroud, I thought, was really poor in the first half. Suddenly scores a goal. His movement was better. Hazard then links up with him. Kovacic looked a better player. Jorginho started to run the game, which you expect him to do when Ozil's not really defending against him. So I think Chelsea played well in the second half, but it summed up Arsenal's season when they capitulated and they made the wrong decisions defensively once they went one goal down. Their spirit went away from them. Torreira crying at the end of the game when he was taken off. That's not a player that you want to be making sure you're disciplined and alert and making sure you get back in the game. He's crying when being taken off and they've lost the final. It wasn't good enough from Arsenal in the second half, although they started well. Let me take your your star player off in a major cup final, no matter the score. Your attacking player for for youngsters is... uh, is an admission of, of where you think you are as a club mm. and as a squad and where he thinks he needs to go. Now, he's not going to get backed. They won't back out now, Emery. They'll give him a few quid, but not anything to compete with, to. with the big boys. They'll, get, they'll, yeah. give him a, they'll give him a token gesture. And it's not all his, you know, it's not all his fault. Of course, it's not all his fault. He said, what, what is it, two transfer windows? Mm-hmm. One in January, not that anybody really buys mm-hmm. players. However, we sat here for... You know, and people would be out there saying, well, this has been no different than, than when Arsene Wenger was here. Well, yeah, I understand that, but is that where you level yourself at? Right. Because the fact that Arsene Wenger was there for so long and there was no structure put in place as everybody else was on the front foot means that they're already starting from a poor position. And, OK, I'm not judging it just on tonight. You know, they were in a position in the Premier League to go and get Champions League football on their own. And they could hardly win a game away from, away from home when the, when the chips were down. They're, they're, a, they're a weak squad, they're a poor squad, and defensively, they're, they're a nightmare. I, I think the challenge with Unai Emery here is, is Mesut Ozil yet again. Mm-hmm. And, and we, I'm sure we talk about him, um, as far as Arsenal is concerned, and, until something happens, if not all summer long. What Arsenal do in the transfer window is going to be dictated by Mesut Ozil, whether he's there or not. My opinion, I've said this quite some time, they just have to, they just have to take the hit on Mesut Ozil because anybody coming in is going to be asking for Mesut Ozil money. I don't think you can afford that. Whether you're Arsenal, whether you're Ode Stan Kroenke or, or anybody else, you cannot afford everybody coming through the door to be asking for that kind of money. And at the same time, I, I, I was surprised to see him in the starting 11 for, for when I am here today because I, I just don't feel he offers an awful lot when the chips are down. Great in the first time, well... As good in the first half as you can expect when things are going your way, but from the time he backs up against it, again, Mesut Ozil goes missing. Tell, t- tell me some. I, I didn't think Aubameyang was... Uh, that front two didn't really work tonight. I think Lacazette's been better than Aubameyang. But those two apart when they're on form, what other Arsenal player, and I include Ozil, what other Arsenal player are the top clubs going to come in and cherry-pick? He's elite. What other players, mm. Arsenal players, are the top clubs going to come in and say... I'll give you X amount for him. Let's ask Robbo. Robbo, is there a player that, that fits that description currently on the, on the Arsenal roster? No. There was talk of Monreal at one point going to Barcelona, but he's not quite good enough. He played at, as the third centre-half, was taken off. You look at the centre-halves, they're not good enough. Socrates used to be a good player, mm-hmm. but he's not quite so good these days. Iwobi's a young player that's got potential, but if you ask Arsenal fans about his performances over the season, they say they haven't been good enough. Maitland-Niles could be a decent player. Craig's absolutely right. The big clubs aren't going to come in for any of Arsenal's players apart from Aubameyang and Lacazette. And Ozil summed up his performances at Arsenal for a couple of years. He was off the pace, didn't do anything defensively, didn't do anything on the ball, was a liability for Arsenal tonight. And he allowed Jorginho, who I've always been critical of, to run the game at times. Wasn't good enough from Ozil. It wasn't good enough from most of the Arsenal team in that second half. 
Arsenal then uh, fall by three. We'll discuss Chelsea in just a little bit, but a reminder, extra time available right now on our YouTube channel. 320,000 subscribers. Are you one of them? You should be. We've got 24-7 transfer updates all summer over on our website, ESPNFC.com. Make sure to check it out. Shirley Eden Hazard will feature there prominently over the summer as we bring in Gab Marcotti. Gab, uh, after the match, Hazard said he thinks it's goodbye, but in football you never know. He added that there could be a decision uh, in the coming days. If this was the Gabometer, would his departure from Chelsea be at a 10? It would certainly be somewhere in between a 9 or a 10. Uh, you know, as he says, in football, never say never. Obviously, he's got a year le- uh, left on his deal. Obviously, he's made it very clear. Uh, he'd love a chance to to write the next chapter of his career, Real Madrid, reunite with his boyhood idols, Zinedine Zidane. Key here, though, remember, the two clubs need to agree uh, a fee. And one thing Hazard does not want to do is he does not want this to be a drawn-out, acrimonious departure. So it's pretty key that this to him that this happened quickly. Craig, one thing's clear, whether it's today or maybe the whole Premier League season. Well, he's called it the perfect end mm-hmm. mm. to a reporter on site in Baku. Uh, now, whether that's the perfect end to Chelsea season, which it is, or I would imagine the question was more uh, geared towards his future. Well, then, look, uh, look uh, at the end of the day, we're you know, surmising here. It's no big secret. Right. It's no big secret. I think... It's 99.9% that he'll be... Where does it leave Chelsea, though? I mean, it's after what we saw today, the impact he had all season, what are they going to be like without this guy? Uh, they're going to be like how they've been most of the season, which is pretty average. Now, to finish third with a pretty average side, which they have at the moment in comparison to uh, Liverpool and uh, Manchester City, is it, a good job for, for Mauricio Sarri, you know, League Cup final, winning the Europa League. Uh, but he has driven that. He's driven a lot of that, Aidan Hazard. Now, uh, obviously, they've got transfer ban looming. We don't know what's happening with Cass uh, over that and whether they'll get some, some leeway. Uh, but if they don't get leeway, it'll be a difficult season for whoever uh, manages Chelsea. And we're talking about Eden Hazard uh, probably going. Uh, there's a possibility the manager uh, might go. So there's lots of ramifications for uh, the football club in terms of the fact they're going to enjoy their, their end of season, they win the Europa League, they had Champions League football anyway, but when you look at when you look at what Liverpool and, and uh, City are doing, then is a concern with potentially a manager going and probably your top player going and potentially transfer bans being being held up uh, is what what kind of season is going to look like for Chelsea next year? And I think if you put all those in, if all those stay, if all those things come true, it's going to be a really difficult one. Shaka, can you overstate his value to this Chelsea club? No, no, you can't. It's, it's not, not, not his value on the field and what you've seen over, over the last few years. Without question, he's been one of the best Premier League players for, for many a season. Um, and, and it'll be hard to replace him. But at the same time, um, no player is bigger than a club. And I think the timing of this could, could work out to, to Chelsea's benefit. Because of that transfer ban that maybe is looming, I think, they, I think they, they'll uh, appeal it and therefore will have to stock their dressing room. And whatever they get for Eden Hazard will go some way to them managing through that, that transfer ban. And let's keep in mind, again, 12 months time, you lose him for free. So it's, it's a decision that, that you have to make. But how do you get one of the world's, or how do you replace one of the world's best players? That's, that's a question that, that many are, are struggling to answer. But you, you just have to try to find players or certainly numbers that, that can get you those results. So good tonight, wasn't he? He was. I... And you look at what he's done for Chelsea over these seasons, and especially this season. He basically was the player that if something was going to happen and Chelsea was going to win a game or create chances, it was always going to come through Aiden Hazard. There's no chance you can go out and buy a player like this easily, as we've all seen. So it's going to have to be uh, bits and pieces. You've got a transfer ban looming. Um, certainly Christian Pulisic coming in, which you know every American's excited about, but that's only going to be a certain piece. He's not going to be able to do what Eden Hazard has done, where he's in, in tight spaces against three players, be three players, connect a pass, be on the other end, and just open up the field. At, at certain times, certainly he can, but overall, a period of time, those players are very, very rare. That's why he's going to go to Real Madrid. So the pieces that are put in place um, have to be specifically better 
than they have right now. And if they're not, uh, Chelsea's going to struggle. It's that simple. You look, Tottenham's already come out and said they're going to spend, which would be a huge surprise. If Tottenham can spend, then, you know, you're talking another jump of, a, of another club that gets possibly up into the top two. And Chelsea, with everything looming with the coach, mm. with, of course, Eden Hazard possibly, you have the, the ban, and just the, the group of players that have shown the strength to go against coaches. You've got a, a, a potential larger issue in bringing in players, getting everybody to believe in that, in, in that product and, and that end goal, and then putting those pieces together that are new to create the opportunity to even be in the top two or three. Mm. I don't know what Gab thinks. I know Gab's right. I don't know what Gab or any of you boys think of this. I think it's a perfect time for, you said it, I think it's a perfect time for Eden Hazard to go after, you know, he's well entitled to, to go at his age and he's primed to one of the biggest, best clubs in the world and just seek that, that, that next step. But also, I think, perfect time for Maurizio Sarri, who's, mm-hmm. had a, who's had a hard time this year from a lot of people. Perfect time? Uh, uh, yeah. He's got, uh, he's got uh, Champions League football uh, again. Absolutely. Are Chelsea going to compete in the Champions League next year? No, they're not. i tell you why. Because he's got them into third. He's won a trophy, the Europa League. There's all these problems looming over them. The best player's going to go. Iguain is going to go back to Italy. <laughs> Olivier Giroud, is, his contract's, I think, is it, is it coming up? Or what? I, was, I can't remember. He's got a year left or whatever. Just resigned, but anyway, yeah. it's just, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's just For a bench years. player. And he's got the potential, potential to go to Juventus... Uh, and make some hay while the sun shines. I, I, I think it would be good timing for both of those individuals it, to make that move. In, ter- in terms of Sarri, I don't think his stock as Chelsea man- manager has been any higher than right now. <laughs> All season long, it's been one controversy after the next. The team has been playing well, criticisms, and now all of a sudden, given everything they've achieved, you sit back and, and look at the season in, in totality. This is a, as good as it's, it's been for, for, for Mr. Sarri. Gab, there's been so much speculation in the days, the weeks leading up to this match. Uh, where is Sarri's future now? And, and did maybe the outcome today help his chances at staying at Chelsea? Or, or maybe, as the guys are suggesting here, uh, boost his stock in a way that makes him quite ready for that Juventus job? Well, look, I mean, in terms of how Chelsea feel about Maritza Sarri, I'm going to repeat what I said before. There's only one person whose opinion matters and is actively involved at Chelsea, and that is Marina Granovskaya, okay? And she appointed him precisely because the squad was getting older, because she wanted a system-type coach so that they could deal with veteran players leaving and they could develop the young guys who come through the academy, uh, the the Ampadus, the Loftus Cheeks, all this other stuff. That was her idea. We all know how it worked out. Um, That will probably change now because, uh, obviously, You've seen the pictures of Andrea Agnelli meeting with Bruce Buck, the Chelsea chairman. Uh, They're obviously in for him. I think Chelsea aren't going to sack him. I think Chelsea are going to demand compensation if he wants to leave uh, and if he comes to them and he says he wants to leave. I also wonder, but this is just my own personal hunch and speculation, I wonder if Juventus also have another potentially another target lined up who, who they might have one last go at, and then if not, go with Sarri. But, you know, from his perspective, I think he'd be very happy to stay. But then he gets a chance to go somewhere else where he doesn't have a bunch of people, mostly fans, uh, against him and pundits in the media and, uh, and start from scratch. I don't think he's the right manager for Juventus personally, but clearly there's going to be a ton of appeal there. Uh, what, one second, Gab, who was suggesting Sarri was going to get sacked? I don't know. I'm kind of, have, have people been suggesting that? If you read the English media, yeah, they were talking, sorry, he's going to get sacked and Lampard's going to come in. Uh, he was going to get sacked and, and, and Steve Holland was going to take over during the season. I, there have been all these reports about the dressing room. Again, guys, you can look at the players. You can see who the numbers are, right? William and Pedro have one year left. Uh, they don't have any heft in there. Sorry, gave David Luiz a new contract. Uh, Eden Hazard is going. Gary Cahill finally is going. Um... Go through the side. Other than Espiliqueta, they're all basically sorry loyalists. So even this whole idea of the, the dressing room disquiet and they need to bring that, it's all nonsense, frankly. I think what you have is a guy who clearly didn't fit the club's culture, and maybe that's fine why they're making the right decision in, in letting him go. Yeah, but just, just, bring, just quickly, Gab, the, the, the discussion was, is the, the discussion was, is now not a good time for Sarri to get out? That, that was, you know, is that not the point? Oh, no. From that perspective, 
I agree with you. Like I said, he's going to a club that, you know, right now is is above Chelsea in the pecking order, a club that has Cristiano Ronaldo, a club where, where he can win the league, which not that big a deal, obviously, in Serie A, where they'll throw resources at them. Um, and he's going to get out of a situation where, you know, he's not – He's not going to be booed and hear people say bleep, sorry, ball, every time they go, and regardless of where they finish in the league. You know, he's not the right, that type of manager, as we saw in the past with Andre Villas-Boas, evidently doesn't fit the Chelsea culture. Marina Granovskaya tried to change that. Evidently, if he leaves, it's because it didn't work, and, and it's a good time for him to go. All right, plenty more from Grab on this week's Syria Awesome podcast with Mina and Paolo, including a full report card on Ronaldo and Juventus. All right, everybody ready to move past the Europa League? Yeah. Craig? Well, <laughs> thanks for paying attention. <laughs> we will be all in on the Champions League final on tomorrow's show as we get set for Liverpool and Spurs on the weekend. Speaking of, Dan is helping spearhead our coverage in Madrid. First of all, have you seen Stevie yet? Where is Stevie and what plans do you have for him once he gets there? Apparently, he is on a route. He's already texted me to ask what the weather's like, whether he needs a suit jacket, and what sort of electricity plugs they use here <laughs> in Spain. I think he's going to be absolutely fine. Uh, he's going to arrive at about lunchtime, so we're going to take him out for lunch. I haven't seen any ground beef on the menu so far. We're going to try and test his palate. And also, there's talk tomorrow of a boat race. Robbo and Gab against me and Stevie. I think you can pretty much uh, make your own jokes there, boys. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, clearly, All kinds of well, clearly you've got to split up the boat with Gab and uh, Nickel in it because that one would go down. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, we, we, we need four guys on Saturday. Let's be honest. Yeah. If he even gets to Madrid, that's a start. Well, I mean, right. he's not going to fall out of the plane. He's a clown. Right. He was positive. round at my house yesterday. I wasn't there looking for cufflinks. <laughs> One, he should never buy a shirt that needs cufflinks. <laughs> and two, he can't. He's right, he ordered cufflinks and he got lost. If he cufflinks can't find his way to the house, how's he going to get to Madrid? Stevie is originally from Scotland, yes, and Europe, so I'll he should what, know that... The, not much gets past you, is it? Well, but I'm saying, <laughs> he should know that, that the plugs are different in Europe. Why is he asking Dan? Because I go back to my initial point. He's a clone. I know he's bad with technology, but a, but an outlet is not technology. Well, there, it is different than the UK. UK plugs are different than the. I'm than telling Euro you, there's plugs. going to be a story yep. before he gets to Madrid. He might not be on tomorrow. Don't. <laughs> I'm telling you, might not be on. Shouldn't have promoted this. Yeah, you got to tune in to find out. <laughs> Shouldn't have done it. Will Stevie make it to uh. Madrid? <laughs> All right, welcome into this edition right. of Extra Time. Craig, Shaka, Brian, and Seb here in the studio. We oh, got Robbo. Just, 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 can we just keep, keep the camera there? I've had to look at these all day. Look. Well, oh, no. <laughs> for, those, for those on the There's podcast, he's shortage. pointing at, uh, at Brian's uh, shoes and lack of socks lack with of a socks. suit. Wait, can't, which you, is a, can't you see that on the podcast? No, no, you listen on the podcast. You all right. <laughs> 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 so Brian's like, it's, it's very dapper on the upstairs, and then it starts to... It takes no, I think that's the look. I think that's the look. Well, I'm not surprised you're saying that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you know about fashion? What do you know about fashion? <laughs> I love this. I'll put myself up against Oh, yeah. Time. Just because your jeans are tight doesn't mean they're skinny jeans. I'll put myself up against uh, anybody in this show. Oh, which really? Isn't, which isn't saying much, by the way. <laughs> when Paul Mariner is one of the most fashionable on here, at, at the ripe old age of, what is he? 66, 66, just turned oh, 60. I thought it was 70. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just had a birthday the other day. Yeah. We've got a couple of clowns with us as well, haven't we? We do. We've got Robbo and Dan. I thought maybe we'd seen them. Maybe we haven't, but they're out there as well. Uh, who, stays at, who, stays, who stays late in the night? Who doesn't go to a bar straight after they're finished and stays for extra time? Well, Gab has done it, and so have these guys. What's I rest my case. Gap you know our producer, he tries to make it as complicated as possible. <laughs> it does. is what, well, half you, past midnight? We're exactly. still in the middle of a roundabout. Which it's is freezing why cold. Yeah, but it's still cold. Vlad Bellas is still behind well, us. You're, let's, let's, just, let's just do one more thing. Yeah. Well, you know, Dad, when he rings you, there's only two words you ever need for him, and that is sod off. <laughs> <laughs> sod off. I'm going to the bar. I'm not doing extra time. I'm in Madrid. Goodbye. 
Okay. Uh, All right, well, let's get for the those, boys. For those wondering, this is Craig post holiday, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> and rested, relaxed, <laughs> back oh. early. But, but, but if he phoned me, right? I'm not winning match. If he phoned me and I was in Madrid, I'd be like, what? I'll You're, do the show, right? I'll do the show. Uh, no, I'll, be, I'll push. Mm -hmm. I'll push. <laughs> Send my contract, I'll do the show. <laughs> but you want me to do extra time? And the bars are open in Madrid. I love it. It's bonkers, isn't it? See, what he's actually doing here is he's, he's, he's making them bonkers. stay out there absolutely. longer. It is, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all part of the scheme. And Dan lived in Madrid as well. He did. He's, da wow. he's absolutely desperado mm -hmm. to get on the nightclub scene as well. Oh, yeah, to use all that Spanish he's been uh, flaunting all week. All right, uh, here's a question for you, Craig. Another clinic from Jorginho, but Craig Burley will still make excuses. I don't care. <laughs> We played against Arsenal. Oh, yeah. I could have played against Arsenal. You're wasn't playing against Ozil. It wasn't a clinic. Yeah, playing against oh, Mesut Ozil. Ozil. You're gonna, uh, you know, listen. Yeah, defensively you're gonna have some work to do, but as soon as you win the ball back, you know you've got at least five or six seconds until Torreira closes you down. Hey, uh, Robbo, uh, Craig doesn't want to say anything nice about Jorginho, do you? Uh, I thought he played much better today, but he was against Ozil. Mate's cut. Have a night off, lads. Yeah, we, couldn't hear him. we couldn't hear him, so I guess we didn't have anything nice to say about Jorginho. The microphone's broken. It was better the first time. Jorginho uh, had a good game. He, he played quite well. He had a better game. Uh, but if he's, as Craig said, he was against Ozil. We didn't close him down. Didn't run off the back of him. It was an easy game for Jorginho, which he played well in. Let's put give, it that way. Give Dan the mic back. This doesn't look miss. awkward. Oh. All right, let's move no, it along I, then. Uh, I, no, let's... no expense spared from Madrid, I see again. That's why we shouldn't do these things. Oh, he is on fire now. Wow. Uh, listen, I'm happy. Listen, I'm happy to give players uh, credit, right? Mm -hmm. However, however, over the piece, over the piece, the Chelsea midfield, amongst other facets of the team, have been good enough, and he's been part of it, particularly against better players who have closed them down, as Brian mentioned, which Mesut Ozil uh, didn't do and was never going to do. So, do you remember when Aaron Ramsey played against them in one of the games at home? Mm. I think he, put, he played the diamond yep. and, and yeah, Ramsey went on him who's not fit obviously and he's going to Juventus uh, he never got a kick never got a kick so you know enjoy your day have your day in the sun mm -hmm. but you know decent player but I think I don't think a lot of Chelsea fans are convinced either to be honest Robbo next question for you uh, let's grade Maurizio Sarri now that the year has come to an end what grade would I give him I think Maurizio Sarri is a decent manager I thought he played some good football at Napoli I think he's a, a good coach. His one blind spot is Jorginho, but I think he's done a decent job, and I think he'll probably stay there if he doesn't go to Juventus. I've got no complaints about Sarri. Robbo, there's a guy in your shot. Can you get him out? <laughs> 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 there's a guy, look, he's there. There's a guy in the shot. Can you get him out? Get him out Get him out There we are, we're back on again. Is that a little Spaniard? Get him out of here. We're attached, there's an umbilical cord between us. You're right, no expense beard. No expense beard here, the worldwide lead up sport. That is ESPN technology on display. All right, uh, next question. This is why they should never do these things. What, extra time or no, send people abroad? No, having these two, our enemy. Having these two. <laughs> so we've, we've, sent, we've sent the creme de la creme. The best people are there. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Look at the next question. The next question. Terry <laughs> wants to know, when did Brian take over Kentucky Fried Chicken? The Colonel. We're in the presence of the Colonel. <laughs> not sure. Uh, yeah. Because of my uh, suit. Well, first of all, I know that has to come from somebody inside because this hasn't come from production yet. Yes, it has. Oh, it's online. Me. It's online. Oh. They have, they've clipped it off just because you're dressed like that. <laughs> <laughs> they put it on our YouTube channel that you can subscribe to somewhere. Thank you. Listen, all, all, I can, all I can say is I'm, I'm very happy with my suit. And if, if I would, took over for Kentucky Fried Chicken, I'd say thank you very much. But why? You know what? I'll have a two-piece original, please, Brian. <laughs> two-piece? Two-piece yeah, original, no, please. Brian, you got to know your Brian, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Buttermilk biscuits. Why do your trousers not go to the bottom? I never get I mean, that. if you they had do. ankles like that, you'd be showing them off, they too. They do. But you, you do the same. 
Uh, it's, so, it's, it's a modern so look, Brian. Yes. Please tell our, our older friend here, our general. I can't pull off. I can't pull off, can't pull off the me. real skinny ones. He's older than me. But um, oh, so. actually, no. I think I think I am just a tiny bit younger. Mm. Oh, yeah, don't look it. <laughs> uh, Ismail wants to know. This is uh, for you, Shaka. Did Shaka shed a tear when it, with it being the last game for uh, Peter Check? We know you're a big uh, Peter Check fan. Yeah, but he's got my shit. All right. I'm there. That was other ESPN technology. All kind of noises going on uh -oh. in this camera. Camera, camera one's and nodding. This, this Robotic camera. Studio. Camera one's nodding. Camera one, a big uh, Peter Tech fan. <laughs> Shock up Sorry, thoughts. Uh, Peter's got my, got my shirt in his uh, trophy room. It was almost an incident. Wait a second. Wait a second. You were asked if, if you if you liked Peter Check, and you went back to talking about you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how this works. <laughs> what has he got in your... He's got a what? He's got one of my shirts. Where? In his trophy room. I have one of his shirts. Have you, have you like seen this, this or did he just tell you that? The leg, That's right? what he told me. Oh, okay. I have one of his shirts in my uh, I no, no trophy room. So you probably said you have, and then he said, oh, I, I've got yours too. No, no, no. What, um, what shirt? No, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> okay. He's got a trophy room. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's oh, move I, this on. Hey, uh, Dan, I know yeah. you're still out there freezing. I, I hate trophy rooms as well. <laughs> Shane so wants to know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the gentleman let me... By the way, what happened to that camera? Oh, my God. It's quite a worry. I don't it? know. It is. Well, let's send it out <laughs> to the boys with the good technology in Madrid. Dan, this one's for you, baby. Who's your favorite co-host from Shane? Oh, that's easy. Sid Lowe. Next. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he well, does. Yeah, they're boys at the Madrid day. No, he's right. got he's got a crush on Sid. Well, they're he buddies. Has got they a like, crush. I'm not sure that Sid really, I'm not sure Sid likes Dan. But Dan <laughs> likes it. We're having dinner tomorrow, Shaka. What are you talking about? He's inviting me. I, I, that doesn't, that didn't he, change one thing I said. I hope he doesn't, I'm not sure Sid likes you. I tell you what, I hope he doesn't bring that friend, Dan, that he brought in Wales. Uh, you know, he's, 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 he's hanging yeah, on friend. The <laughs> <laughs> oh, the camera's off for a button again. <laughs> oh. Uh, the, the friend, he, he felt like you hadn't had a bar for a while. It smelled like it as well. <laughs> All right, we've, uh, I think we only have... Well, we need to hurry up because they're having technical issues. Well, you need to, what do you mean we need to hurry up? Every time I try to read a question, you stop me. Have you not seen R2-D2 in the studio? <laughs> it is. R2-D2, get the promo up.